Have you ever wondered what makes bodies tick? Are you creating the sexual reality you desire and require? Would you like to know more about what else is possible with bodies? What if your fantasies are not as strange as you thought they were? What if you could learn to be kinder to your body and kinder to others' bodies? Would you like to create confidence in the bedroom and beyond? How has your sex life, or lack of it, affected other areas of your life? Have you lost your mojo and wondered where to find it? Everyone has the potency to be a sexual superhero. Get ready to listen, sense, and play with the sexualness that is you. Now, here is the host of The Pleasure Zone, Body Whisperer, Melitza Yelenich. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Melitza Yelenich. And tonight, I have a very fun topic called The Secret Hidden Pleasure Zones. Um, one of the sort of things that came up for me was that um, you know, I was looking Valentine's Day and um my lover and I don't really do those things so much. Um so I just remembered reading something on my one of my daughter's Valentine's, something about being um your secret Valentine. I was like, "Oh, curious. I wonder how many people really just like to like be secret and hidden and have secret hidden um things that they don't actually tell people about about their bodies." Um, so there's a whole lot of things that I'll probably get into with this. Before I uh, just dive into the topic, though, I'd like to introduce you to myself, if this is the very first time you've been on the show. Um, the show does contain adult content quite often, 99% of the time. And sometimes there are inappropriate words that I use. Fair warning. Um, and if you would like to use this as a way to educate your children in the realm of bodies and sex, fantastic. And if it is actually not something that you're choosing to do, okay, cool. Just listen to it without your children running around. Um, so tonight um, we will be talking about bodies mostly. And one of the things that I love to do in this world is talk about bodies and also, one of the things that I've trained in is a lot of different varieties of somatic body work. And one of them is um, essentially like having yoga done to your body. It's this ease of movement um, that I do with bodies that starts to release tension from literally your skeletal system out. Um, and that is something called the mitzvah technique. So even if you look it up, there are like 12 practitioners in the world. I'm one of them. Um, so we're a rarity and the work is phenomenal. Um, so we are like a secret hidden pleasure zone, us mitzvah technique practitioners and teachers. Uh, there are so few of us on the planet. So um, though it is similar to other body works, it is very different in other ways. So um, if you'd ever like to try out my delicious yame secret hidden pleasure zone of the mitzvah technique, I would love to work on your body. So I invite you um, to Toronto, Canada to have work done with me. I invite you to El Dorado, the smallest little town in eastern Ontario, um, to come and have a private session. Or you can always invite me to your area because I love traveling and working on bodies. Um, so that's one of the uh, things that I offer bodies in on this planet to create more ease, and that's one of the things that I really love to contribute to the planet and to the world is having more ease with bodies, movement, um, and generally how that reflects in all of our lives. So um, the other work that I do, which I absolutely adore, is work from access consciousness called the bars, and also there's a whole body of work um, that is body processes. So um, the bars just really brings a lot of ease into your life. Very simply put, it's like releases all your limitations so you can actually have a greater life. Um, it's a touch. So uh, if you'd like more information on that, check out www.accessconsciousness.com. You can also check out my website, www.milicajel. Enic.com. So those are a few of the things that um, I offer in my daily practice, uh, along with other things that I've been doing for many years. Um, and one of the the secret hidden talents I have, um, I'm just going to reveal some secret hidden talents that I have. And one of the secret hidden talents I have is that I actually am a uh, martial artist as well. So 
I hold a second degree black belt in an art called Nimpo Tai Jitsu. So not only do I have the capacity to snap your neck off, I can also roughly put it back in place. So that's the beauty of the work I do. And that is one of my secret hidden talents that I'm letting the world know about. I actually have taught as well in that um, area. So um Upon revealing more of my secret hidden talents, I do have excellent talents in the bedroom, and that's why I, uh, that's what I say about that, and that's why I love talking about it. Uh, not just my own talents, but everybody else that I know that I can high five and go, excellent talents that you have. Um, and, and I love uh, having people come on to this show and, and really like allow themselves to acknowledge the sexy greatness that they truly be. And there's something about this show for me that really allows me every week to kind of step up and go, wait a minute, I'm not such a freaking loser. Maybe I have some skills and talents. Maybe I've got some secret skills that I wasn't even aware of. And some of those things that are secret skills are actually things we're so freaking good at that we don't even know they're a skill or a talent or a capacity um, so for me, in my life, I didn't even know that I had skills or talents um, in the bedroom until I f found people who really didn't have any um, skills or talents in the bedroom because that wasn't like a natural, for them it just wasn't something that was ease or fun for them. It was almost like effort and, and torture in a way, like very tr tricky, painful, and full of a lot of thinking and rightness or wrongness. So celebrating all of our talents um, to me is one way to start to get them out of hiding and make them less secret. So tonight we're going to be revealing all kinds of secret hidden pleasure zones. So those pleasure zones include areas of our bodies and they also include pleasure zones that we have of ourselves in our lives, things that we're actually hiding from ourselves that are so secretly deliciously yummy that if we actually allowed them to be revealed, to ourselves first and acknowledge them and then to the world how that can change so much for us so a lot of what i uh, introduce on this show has a lot to do with bodies yes and how much of our bodies actually translates to the rest of our lives that is like the connection of that is what i really like to talk about so as much as we can really explore the pleasure zones of our bodies it's also that allowing that to show up in your life also allows you to be more vulnerable for other things to show up in your life. And the more that, you know, the more that we just kind of like, it, it's kind of like washing yourself over, you know, so that all the crap that's been sticking to you your whole life that made you maybe feel like you were walking around like a woolly mammoth and then you just get under this thing and it clears you off and all of a sudden you're like, not the woolly mammoth anymore and you're like free and naked and running and you don't have this stuff and like sticks and mud all stuck to you and you felt gross before but this actually like allows all this stuff to slough off to you so that you can actually start to really feel more at ease with your body and your life and everything that you're choosing so um to me tonight with this whole topic of the secret hidden pleasure zones, some of the questions that I was looking at was whether you as an audience, you know, just start to look at this. And I started to wonder about this too this week, and it actually inspired me to do something, and I'll tell you about that after. So um, my question was, do you have any undiscovered pleasure zones in your body? And as I was playing with that, I was asking my body, like, body, is there any, like, part of you or anywhere here that, you know, any part of this body, physical, energetic, that is actually a hidden pleasure zone that I haven't um, become aware of or revealed yet to myself. And are, are there any pleasure zones of my body in contact with my lover's body, a pleasure zone that I haven't been aware of yet? So the fun part is, that um, I have actually seen my lover for a few minutes here and there. He's been working a lot this week, so and so have I. So on the rare occasion that I have seen him this week, I've got to actually play with and experiment with the the idea of whether um, I could find more pleasure zones on my body connecting with his body. 
Um, and so for this week, what I, and I had actually forgotten how much I love to just like nestle my lips and my nose and my like, my lips and my nose into a person's like that part of that neck. I think they call it the nape of the neck. And I just like could just like live there. And I love just resting my face there um, and giving kiss there. So for me, it was like, wow, I totally forgot about how much I love that. Um, because like we just got into some kind of like, we've got 12 minutes before the kid comes home. Let's get her on. And usually when we've got the 12 minutes to like get her on, I'm like, let's get her done fast. So do me from behind. Let's go. Yes. Okay. Let's go get the kid off the bus. So we can pull it off real fast if we have to. And like, sometimes I prefer not to. And sometimes I prefer those like super long, um, elongated. And so for me, sometimes the super long elongated, you know where we're going with that, right? But those times where it's like more drawn out and, and it's softer and it's gentler. And I love sometimes just having that time where you can just like rest your face in the person's nape of their neck because it's just so lovely. And there's something so like, there's such a beautiful softness there. So for me, this week has been like very fun about asking my body more of that. Like, are there any zones that I'm not aware of uh, that I could actually become more aware of and play with? And so much of it was like stuff that I had like enjoyed, you know, when I first had boyfriends and I was, you know, in my teens and I was like, I want to discover every part of a boy's body ever. So I'm going to try everything out. I'm going to look at everything and I'm going to stick my face everywhere because i got to find out what's really fun. And I, I was aware that I was really curious then and I was willing to just like go anywhere. I didn't have a point of view about it. It wasn't until I got to university that I really got a point of view about it. When I started hearing guys include me in conversations as if I was a guy and then I started to judge the shit out of my body like I'd never done before. So uh, as a sort of teen I had a um I didn't I wasn't like totally didn't have like total freedom with my body but I didn't have the kind of judgment I had about it in my 20s uh where I started to judge things um and started to really think like women are gross women smell uh you don't you know you're fat here you're not fat there you don't have enough of this and I just hung out with too many guys who took me on as like their kid's sister or you're one of the guys and I was like oh fuck I'm one of the guys was so not a kindness for me to stick around those conversations and buy their points of view. Like I could have been in the conversations, but it's that I bought their point of view that actually started to shut down some of my pleasure zones. So, you know, if if you've ever been in a space where you actually started to shut down your pleasure zones because of somebody else's point of view or they were like, oh, don't go there. That's disgusting. Whatever you do. Oh, my God, you touched his bum hole. That's disgusting. And you were like, oh, my God, I'm disgusting. I'm never going to do that again. But meanwhile, it was like the most fun you'd had since last Sunday when you touched somebody else's bum hole. Um, and you're like, oh, my God, but that's so much fun. How could I not choose that? And uh, Or it was your own bum hole. I have no idea. But, you know, you could – if you're just willing to not by the point of view that you're hearing from other people. So for me, it was hearing like comments from um, men, you know, keeping me in the sister clique, you know, um, so that I could hear how men had the point of view about, or the guys I was hanging around had the point of view about like women's bodies having like, they would have a crotch odor or they had a this or their boobs were like this or their boobs made funny shapes or, and I was like, oh my God, I bought all these points of view and I judged the crap out of myself. So, um, so please, like if you've had any of that, just please acknowledge that these a are probably not your points of view. So ask who those points of view belong to. And if they're not, return them to sender with consciousness attached so that we can have way more freaking kindness to bodies. Um, and then, you know, as you do that, you can actually start to get um, that, you know, your entire body is actually a pleasure zone. So until that we actually destroy and uncreate our points of view of parts of us being gross or disgusting or, oh my God, I could never go there. That's so weird. Um, then once we get start to eliminate those points of view and you can receive on every level and not have a point of view about it, you know, 
strange and mysterious things can show up um, for you in your body that you never even knew were possible. So I'm noticing that I'm running into break time, and I just wanted to um, let everybody know that when we come back from break, we are going to discuss more questions and more ways to kind of discover your pleasure zone. So we're going to go to break now, and when we come back, we will be chatting more about the hidden secret pleasure zones on the pleasure zone. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. Would you be willing to explore what has already been introduced as sexual practices on this planet? What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation. By tuning into The Pleasure Zone radio show, with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call us in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255-TALK or Canada 613-800-8736 or you can Skype us at A2Zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask for comment by email by sending to Melitza at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Melita Yelenich, and I seem to have a little thing going on with my throat today. Um, and perhaps it's changing. So I'm that cute that I needed to tell you. So we tonight are talking about the secret hidden pleasure zones. And one of the things for me is that the more that we become aware of our bodies um, and the less sort of secret hidden spots we have in our body and the more we're aware of our bodies, uh, we can definitely have more fun with them. So one of the questions in the chat rooms is, um, hmm, I wonder what it is I did swallow. Well, I'll talk to you about that later, my friend. So, um, the, yeah, that was an El Distracto. Thank you. I love you for that. So, would you like, uh, I'm wondering too, it's like, would you actually like to know the parts of your body that are sensual and sexual and that get turned on? Or is that something that you're kind of like almost intimidated by? Or that when somebody even says to you, hey, do you masturbate? And, you know, a lot of women will be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't masturbate. Like so many women are not even willing to be, uh, comfortable with their body, so you know, especially for women. And I, there are a few men that I have heard of who also don't masturbate, so that happens, but it's not as common. Um, and so, first of all, like, please be willing to be aware of your body, play with your body, um, and and through that discovery, you can actually create a map of your body, a pleasure zone map. So, if you can imagine. Um, you know, you could literally, and I do know there is a method where people actually do create the map of the zones of their pleasure zones of their body. Um, 
in partnership. So this is something you can do with a partner if you like in celebration of the belated Valentine's Day. Um, and and in celebration of life, why not, right? Create this um, map to your pleasure zone. So you can, you know, get one of those uh, sketch outline drawings of a body front and back, um, literally pinpointing the spots of your body that are totally erogenous, erotic, and the most sensual for you. And the fun thing is, is those spots will change over time, and some of them will become more sensitive. Some of them will have more sense to them and more awareness in them. Uh, again, it's like the more you actually pull down your barriers and receive more of you, um, literally from across a room, your body can have that like sensation of being stimulated. So um, please like map what it is that you know turns you on. Um, and then how much fun can you have discovering either with yourself, if you're, you know, if you don't have a partner, discover with yourself what parts of your body really like to be turned on. And of course, like your touch on your own body is going to be different than the touch of somebody else touching your body. So uh, know that too, right? And also know a few other things, like do you like to have your body touched very gently, like a tickle? Do you prefer to have more of uh, a caress that has more pressure to it? Do you like full pressure? Do you like, you know, roughness? Um, you know, because everybody's body is different. So if you're willing to be vulnerable enough to like know this about you and the willingness to uh, allow your partner to see what you're aware of with your body and go, you can literally show them your map and go, this is, this is the parts of my body that I know get turned on. And, you know, this area likes this more and this area likes this more. I know it sounds kind of strategic and funny, but I can be a kind of strategic girl. And it can actually contribute a lot to having um, a more easeful conversation in a lot of ways. So for some people, it's like they're not ready and if you're not really ready to have a conversation or to like direct a person and say it's this and this you can just be like hi I just discovered to have um, an erogenous map of my body and I just wanted to know if you wanted to see it because here you go here's my map and then you show them your map if you'd like to right and you can have a more of a discussion about this where what you're aware of on your body and then allow them to discover parts of that with you as well. So how much fun can you have using your treasure maps, we'll call them your pleasure zone maps, to go on a little, um, as we were talking before we got on the call, to literally go on like a treasure hunt map of your body. So remember when you were kids and you, I don't know if you guys did this, but we did, we would hide things on each other and then we would create a map to go locate the missing objects. Um, and I did that with kids that I looked after as well. So I would hide things outside, inside, and create maps. Go find the missing objects. And how much fun did we have as kids doing that? That we could actually take all these fun things we did as kids and translate them into our adult life and actually make them really fun um, in our, in, you know, in our more intimate settings with having the pleasure zone of our body. So, uh, f so for example, so if I were to create a pleasure zone of my body, I would be going to um, certain things. Like I love to have my neck held um, and I love to have, there's certain ways that my body loves to be held in a hug and my body likes to be touched, say my breasts like to be touched in a certain way or my even um and my body likes really strange things too that some well maybe strange to people um but my body loves love loves to be licked in certain areas so one of my certain areas is actually my armpits which can be very strange to people however my body loves it it is like as erotic as having the back of my knees licked, which may also be something very strange to people. But if you know what your pleasure zones are, even if they're really freaking weird and you're willing to let the person you're with know that and explore that. And if they're like, yeah, I can't go there. I can't go to the underarm thing because that's just gross. Okay, cool. You can't do the underarm thing, but you know about you that your body likes that. 
oh my god what a gift to you and if one day you find somebody who's like yes I will lick your armpit for you woohoo you'd be surprised at how much fun that is just like our crotches like our crotches hold so much many pheromones so do our armpits like we are just like we ooze our scent out of these armpits and out of like our crotches we just like smell like us uh, and yes, you can clean your armpits as my show last week with the, you know, some tips on how to actually have your lover keep coming back. And one of the top tips was hygiene, right? So yes, please do clean your armpits because that is very helpful. Um, and the one of the erogenous, erogenous things for me and my one of my secret hidden pleasure zones is to actually smell other people's bodies uh, when their bodies have a certain there's a certain smell that I absolutely love about men's bodies and women's bodies and it comes out of their bodies when they're totally turned on so if if I'm if I actually like plant my nose in somebody's armpit when they're totally turned on and there's this pheromone that happens comes out of the body I uh, that I'm done like that is the most that is incredibly sensual and yummy for me it is like ah it's like even thinking about it it's like such a turn on I love it so you know if we could actually receive those things that a lot of people have a point of view about like oh my god you have an armpit smell but if you actually receive that smell and actually acknowledge that that's the smell of the person you're with when they're really turned on by your body there's something about it that just becomes this like oh this is enticing pheromone that it's almost like you can't resist it so please like play with all of those areas that even if you think that they're really strange uh or you know you've been taught oh those are dirty parts those are smelly like i can't go there please play with them because you're going to start to find out that you actually have parts of your body that are love to be turned on so please do write get your you know magic drawing out of the map of your body and and know for you number one know for you what turns you on if you're expecting to have a lover that can do magic to your body and turn you on in ways that you've never been turned on before, yet you're not even willing to know what parts of you like to be stimulated, that to me is so freaking unfair. So how how you could possibly like think that somebody else is supposed to know how to turn on your body when you don't even know what works for you or what is a turn on for you um yes there's exploration but then the expectation of somebody else being able to pull that off for you is truly unkind as we we're saying in the in the um chat room that expectation of somebody else to being the better lover for you than you are is is like uh, really quite unfair um, and the pressure it puts on them is really unfair as well so how much uh, of a kindness can you be to your body by creating that map of your pleasure zone so that you can find those secret hidden treasures of you the secret hidden treasure spots that you didn't even know were so spectacularly delicious that it's like a you know some kind of herb that's brand new in your recipes and you're like trying it out and your body's like oh my god i love cilantro and i had no idea uh, and it can be like that kind of like, wow, I love this new flavor. It's phenomenal. Um, I love cilantro. It's not new to me, but I love cilantro. That's why I brought it up. So um, if your body really loves um, to be stimulated, for example, but you're not really sure and you always just thought it was like related to your common areas like for women, breasts, vagina, uh, you know lips I suppose those are the three most common areas um, throw some other things in you know throw in the feet if you like to have your if you don't even know that you like to have your feet touched the funny thing is is where we tend to have the most judgment about receiving and we say oh no I can't do that and when we actually let people into that area and let them explore and touch that area our world can change so I'd like to talk more about 
tapping into those areas when we come back from this very short break um, with the Pleasure Zone. So when we come back, we will be chatting more about the secret hidden Pleasure Zones on the Pleasure Zone. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. Would you be willing to explore what has already been introduced as sexual practices on this planet? What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation. By tuning into The Pleasure Zone Radio Show with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on A2Zen.fm. What does optimal cell health mean, and how can you create it? Pulsed electromagnetic field therapy by Swiss Bionics can improve your well-being in every area of your life. The PEMF mat stimulates cells to move and create space between cells for optimal cell function. How does it get better than that? Use two to three times per day for eight minutes will improve circulation and immune function. Cell metabolism and repair begins, and mobility also will increase. Do you desire better health? If you're interested or would like a session, call 613-473-3805 or in Toronto. Call or text 416-253-1617. Monthly rentals start at only $300 per month. Is now the time to choose Optimal Cell Health? This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call us in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255-TALK or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also make the choice to ask for comment by email by sending to Melitza at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Hi everyone, welcome to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Milica Jelanić, and tonight we've been talking about the secret hidden pleasure zones. And for so many of us who maybe haven't really ever, um, you know, taken the time to really discover for you what is really pleasurable for you and your body, um, and there's so many people on the planet who haven't. And the cool thing is, even if you have taken the time to do that, what if it's actually changed? And what if there's more to it now? So what if you're um, you're now more willing to receive other things that you were never willing to receive before? So you may have, you know, at times in your life, judged different things and said, oh, yeah, that doesn't interest me. I'm not into that. Um, you know, probably a good I don't know, 10 years ago, I would have said, yeah, I don't really think I want my underarms licked or sniffed or something. And then somewhere along the way, it just became like, oh, wow, I actually really like that. That's wild. I'm an odd bean. But hey, how's it get any better than that? Um, is there's there's so many like parts of the body that we could easily judge and say that, you know, um, you know, that's just odd and that's not erotic, but so much of it can be. If you allow your body to receive pleasure in every single molecule. So, you know, that's one of the things that I uh, have a lot of fun just knowing for me even is what can turn, what can turn me on. Like, and it can be different things all the time. And uh, truly, like one of the most erogenous things, and you know, when you hear a scientist talk about this too, our most erogenous organ is our brain. And it really is. It's like where all the information comes out of. So that, you know, if we're talking about bodies, it would be our brain. So now if we're actually talking energetically, what is the most erogenous area of our bodies? Um, truly, is it actually... Uh, you know, the brain, or is it every single molecule that you be uh, is the most erogenous area of you. So, 
you know, we sometimes do this thing where it's um, the body, the brain, the soul, and it's actually like completely all intermingled. So if we separate any of that, then we're actually separating from who we truly be, for one. Um, and we're doing that whole false thing of separation. So I really encourage you to just acknowledge you are like every single molecule of you, your brain, your being, and every single one of those molecules can be stimulated. Every single one of those molecules can have a reaction that is orgasmic. So what can you choose to to turn those molecules on? Even if it's like the size of a pinprick area of your body that, you know, somebody just happens to discover through touch or licking or breathing or smelling, and there's just this like really tiny area that is so incredibly erogenous that you never even discovered before, how much fun would it be to have somebody um, that intimately playing with your body to discover that area for you so that you can have more awareness of you too and how does that open up your world to so many other things. I know it sounds strange that your world could actually open up by you allowing your body to perceive more pleasure. So let's look at that. So if your body is actually receiving pleasure um, and it has joy, how much of that reflects out to the rest of your life? So if you're walking around feeling sexy, looking good, and your body's turned on, and all this great stuff is going on for your body, and your body's feeling, you know, like it's getting great um, attention, Bodies love attention, by the way. So how much more does that contribute to having greater everything in your life? So now let's look at the opposite. So if you are walking around um, and you're feeling pretty crappy about yourself, not feeling too sexy, feeling like no part of you could be turned on, um, even with the world's most magnificent vibrator ever, but you could never get turned on because you're just, you've just shut off everything. Um, how's that working for you? So it's really like, you know, really about starting, even if you are in that place where like nothing seems to be turning you on ever and you're just frustrated, if you start to really play with this map of your erogenous, erot erotic pleasure zones, you're going to, you really will truly, if you're doing it with no point of view, you will start to find parts of you had no idea would like to be turned on. There are parts that have been asleep that are like, oh my God, I'd actually like to be turned on. So my challenge to you, you know, in the next week is to actually like get your body completely naked. And now if your most erogenous thing, say, is where certain um, types of materials, like say you love flannel and some people love flannel. So if you love flannel, put it on. If you love silk, put it on. If there's something that your body would love the touch and feel of, put it on. Um, right now, my body has this like uh, total love of sleeping naked in my um, down comforter, in and I love it. And it, I used to love pajamas until like the last year, and now absolutely love sleeping in my down comfortable comforter, just like naked with my comforter. There's, I feel like I wake up, I feel sexy, go to bed, I feel sexy. And the funny thing is. You know, I could have had a down comforter before wearing pajamas. It feels totally different. So there are things that you could actually choose that might actually wake your body up more and have more pleasure in your body that is as simple as sleeping naked. That could be as simple as getting out of the shower, standing there with your body completely naked and just staring at it in the mirror um, and really enjoying the wetness dripping off of your body. So... What if you could turn you on more than any pornography ever has, more than any magazine ever has, more than anything ever has? Like, What if you could be your erotic, desirable um, object of affection? Like if you really could desire you so much that every time you look at you, you're like, damn, I'm sexy hot. Holy crap, I'm turned on just looking at me. Um, yes, people may find you to be an arrogant ass. However, are you willing to be an arrogant ass? And if you are, cool. Walk around, admire your body, acknowledge your body, have fun with it, and really start to like get how you are beautiful. 
you are freaking awesome and you are a hottie. So just know that and like really start to uh, just be it so that you're not uh, denying yourself all the pleasure that you could have. So, oh, I'm so excited. I was like getting worked up there. So (laughs) my question to you is, are you actually really, you know, is your body something familiar to you or is your body actually a mystery to you? Um, If your body is a mystery, some people love mysteries and they like to discover things. And some people are like, I hate mysteries. I want to know all the answers. The cool thing is if you are one of those people who likes mysteries and are willing to be curious, you can find a lot more um, things to do and play with. So one of uh, the other things I wondered is, are other people's bodies a mystery to you? So if other people's bodies are a mystery to you and you're kind of like, I don't get bodies, you know, if you're, you know, you're with somebody and you're like, I don't know what to do with this body because uh, this, I don't know how to turn it on. It's not getting, you know, I'm with a boy body. It's not getting an erection. I'm with a girl body. She's not having an orgasm. I don't get it. I don't get bodies. Bodies don't work for me. I don't understand this. You know, it's okay. So can you, A, stop judging the crap out of yourself? Um If you are going to judge anything, please judge your partner as totally freaking sexy because that will certainly get an erection going really fast. So, um, and for women, you know, if men if men are judging women or women are judging women, whatever the sex partner role is, please judge your partner as being super sexy. That's one thing on this planet um, that seems to still work to get bodies turned on is the judgment of sexy. We're still at a place where we haven't fully... Uh, received that we can just be space and be and be turned on so um, you know if there's going to be any judgment let's just try that out for now so um, one of the other things that I was wondering about uh, is you know when it does come to other people's bodies how much uh, of their secret hidden stuff are you willing to receive like are you um, you know, if they say to you, you know, I don't, this is something that's really, I really, really love this. Can you just do this for me? And you're like, oh, I can't. That's one thing I can't do. So please, like, everything I would say before you even get with a partner and have this discussion, uh, please explore for you so that you're not judging them in front of them uh, or that you're not like, giving them the look that you're grossed out, please make a list of things that you find totally repulsive when it comes to sex. So if anal sex is totally disgusting to you, write that down. If, you know, um, having toes in your vagina totally disgusts you, write that down. If certain things totally disgust you, please write that down. And then start to ask to destroy and uncreate all your points of view about that. And I also ask, if I were truly willing to choose that, what would my life be like in 5 years, 10 years, 15 years? Again, the willingness to choose something doesn't mean you're choosing it, right? So it's just like, if you were willing to choose anal sex, would that create more ease in your life? Or if you're absolutely refusing it, is that going to create more ease in your life? Or if you're like, I refuse to have toes in my vagina, that's disgusting. Um, But then if you were willing to receive that, would that change something to you? you? So I am just wondering, like, have you ever done that? Have you ever made the list of things that totally repulse you and started to, like, really look at them and go, okay, everything that is, I'll just try and uncreate it. Everything that is, I just... And also ask, whose point of view is that anyway? Is it some, you know radical um, religious point of view that you've bought to make it disgusting. Um, what is that really? So please just try and uncreate your points of view of everything you find disgusting. First make the list so that you know that you have a list of things that gross you out. Then also make the list of things that you think are the only things that turn you on. Like I only get turned on when I'm in this position. I only blah, 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 blah. All your list of your onlys. Only if my nipples are rubbed in this certain direction this many times will I actually achieve orgasm. Please write these things down because as much as we can have them mapped to our erogenous zones, we can also start to limit ourselves by thinking we have only certain things. Um, So this map is an evolutionary map. It changes all the time. It can be a revolutionary map too. Um, So 
please uh, start to make these notes for you about like what totally repulses you, what totally turns you on, and all of those are points of view. So please just try and create them all. Times a godzillion, right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, online, shorts, boys and beyonds is how you can do it. If you don't know what that is, go to theclearingstatement.com and find out, or just do it, just for fun. Um, if you don't really need that much information on it, if it works for you. So um, the being turned on part can be really a lot more ease if you're willing to not have a point of view about it. And those secret hidden things can start to be uh, uh, revealed. So sometimes those things that totally, totally disgust you uh, may actually be funny things that are a really super big turn. So I have to say, when I was probably uh, 20, about 25, I um, was with a partner and I had this point of view that anal sex was like, oh my God, that's painful. And I'd heard the saying so many times of uh, things only go out, not in. And and I think I even said that to him. I was like, no, 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 things can only go out, not in. So then I had this friend whose uh, boyfriend would only have anal sex with her when she was on her period. He wouldn't have like vaginal sex with her. And then I was like, well, what an asshole. He's so rude. He's just anally ra I had these points of view and I was like, he's anally raping her. He doesn't respect her. I was like, I had the craziest points of view that he was being unkind to her until I tried it. And I was like, well, that was one of the most fun things ever. I really like that. Holy cow, who knew? But I ha until you let go of your judgments of it and actually choose to uh, explore it, uh, it kind of just makes life a lot easier if you're willing to explore it. And the question in the chat room is, did I pay him a dollar? I could pay him a dollar. I'm still pretty sure I could contact him. So, um, yes, when somebody actually does know what they're talking about, you can give them a dollar and they can become millionaires in no time. So... Uh, yeah, please make your list. That's my, my big thing right now is for you to actually know that you can do that. So, holy God, I think I ran over my break on that one. Um, I'm just going to not have a break right now, if my producers don't mind, because I've only got seven minutes left and I'm just kind of going <laughs> and going. Um, and I do know that there's a caller online. So um, if we are ready and they've been so incredibly patiently waiting for me, and I'm so grateful for that, I was on a rant. So, um, if you would like to speak now, I'd love to hear from you. I'm here. <laughs> How are you? You've been so you've been so so patient with me. I was just like, I have so much information. I've got to spew it that, out. That, that is so cool. It's, it is great information too. And you know, I was just going to say um, something that you alluded to earlier. You know, my the brain for me is probably probably my the brain my head and everywhere around there my hair everything that is a whole, it's not really a hidden zone but it's something we don't think of every day but that's my secret hidden erogenous zone I love it, and I actually know men who go. I have fr I have a friend who um, has a salon, and I know men who like literally show up there to get their hair washed because she gives like head rubs, right? When she does the hair washing mm -hmm. thing, and uh, she's reported to me, and we've high fived on this that she she will pull guys' energies while they're in the chair. Um, and one guy was like, what did you just do to me? Like he had an erection and I was like, good for you. I'm so proud of you. And so she's like, give, given erections to guys while rubbing their heads in her salon. I'm so proud of her. And if yeah. she is listening tonight, which she sometimes is, I'm high-fiving her energetically. <laughs> <laughs> the show. It's actually that. It, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, go ahead. It was actually that in the tip of my fingers. Right. Yeah, those are things that we don't usually even get touched, right? Right. Those, like, secret spots. So do you actually – I know we've chatted before, Mike. Oh, sorry, uh, caller. Um, do you <laughs> do do you actually run bars? Because it's like the tips of the fingers and the head, they just seem to all come together with access bars. No, not, no, you don't just, do that yet. I can't believe it. So you're going to come to Ontario to come to a class with me, aren't you? I know you are. Yes, I am. And I get to touch your head, and then you can touch my head. 
It's going to be kick-ass, and it's going to be an experience of a lifetime. That'd be so cool. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so, um, so what other things like when you've been with a partner, have you have they ever just like not been willing to tell you what turns them on? Like, have they ever avoided telling you what their secret hidden pleasure zones are? Like, have you had to discover them on your own? Yes, and yes, um, I've had people tell me for the fear of, and I don't know why it would be a fear. But it was the fear of them being vulnerable, mm. them not having the control over their bodies or their minds. And yeah, I've had cool. to discover. So through discovery, like, is that partly through talking, or has that been through where you're actually like playing with their body, or? Um, combination of both or what is it for you that actually helps you to map out erogenous zones in a body it's it's both it's a combination of talking and touching and just so, the, yeah the exploration yeah what do you find was the most unusual um erogenous zone that you discovered on a on a body yours or somebody else's well on a female body I would probably say it was, um, hmm, oh, I'm trying to think that. It's probably um, under the toenail. Oh, wow. Under like, under like the big toenail. Wow. That's something that like, yeah, that's a, like an area like whoever goes there, right? Right. That was, so, that was on a female body, yeah. That's interesting. So that was something that just like all of a sudden your body just felt compelled to kind of go to that area and you're like, wow, that person loves this. Right. That's cool. That yeah. is such a get like the following of the energy can reveal so much of those secret hidden zones. And I would say for me, the weirdest, the weirdest thing, I well, eh, it's not weird, but um, it would probably be... Uh, how do I explain it? Um, or you can just say it. <laughs> these people well, don't no, it. it's um, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's um. This is this is little. This is gonna be a little weird. It's um. I had a, I had a hernia operation. Right. And the scar the scar tissue. Oh yeah, it's like super sensitive. It's like a super sensitive. Yeah, it's like a super sensitive area for me. Yeah, absolutely. And when so, I started touching it, after a while, I felt the. It was just like it, it becomes like erotic, right? Right. So, like, even people who have had like heart surgery and stuff, like you know, there's this like massive part of their body that got cut open and became so vulnerable. Right. And it's amazing. Actually, we have somebody chatting in the uh, the chat room about an appendix uh, scar as well. So yeah. that's wild. Okay, wow. I just realized we have one minute to go, so I have to close off the show. But I want to thank you for coming on and chatting about uh, hidden pleasure zones with me. Thank you for that and well, having well, you call in. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me on. Cool. So um, next week's show, I actually have like five shows lined up. I haven't chosen which one I'm going to throw on next week. So um, you guys will know in a day or so what what next week's topic will be. So thank you so much for listening to The Pleasure Zone and for everybody in the chat room tonight playing with me, uh, Mike for calling in, uh, and everybody for your contributions energetically. Uh, now and in the future. Thank you so much. And if you would uh, like to friend me on Facebook, you can. Uh, that's Melitza Jelinek. You can also follow me on Twitter, Melitza Jelinek. You can also go to my website, www.milicajelenic.com. That's melitzajelenik.com. Thank you for choosing to listen to The Pleasure Zone. Melitza Jelinek will return next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain and 5 p.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.